and welcome to Virtual Thoughts, episode number two. We are here with Rick Vanover, who's a product strategy specialist and community manager at Veeam. And Veeam just announced something brand new. What was that, Veeam, that, that Rick? Uh, hi, Edward. Thanks for having me on. Uh, today, the 14th of April, we announced a new product. Well, we announced it last year, but it's available. Beta is over. RCs are done. Generally available. Veeam Endpoint Backup 1.0 totally free, free endpoint backup products. So today's a big day. In fact, Twitter was on fire. I couldn't even keep up. I never can keep up with Twitter. So you're not alone there. I mean, mine's been just streaming past on various concepts I like to follow, but every now and then I just get a chance to say something. Sure. That's the way it is. So endpoint works on Windows boxes. It doesn't work on Linux or Mac, which for me is a big problem because I only use Linux or Mac. I may have, I think I have two Windows desktops that it would work on. Mm -hmm. And one of them is a VDI session, so it's being, can be backed up with standard Veeam backup. Mm -hmm. And the other one is a Fusion VM, which it can't be done that way. So it actually, this would be perfect for that. Yeah, if you have data that need, needs to be protected in that uh, Fusion VM, that's a good candidate. And, and we, we started, you know, 1.0. You know, we can't boil the ocean just yet. We might have plans to do such or boil the sky. We'll talk about that later. But basically, um, you know, what we're looking to do is there's an addressable market of Windows endpoints, and it's Windows 7, 8, 8.1, Server 2008 R2, Server 2012, and 2012 R2. Pretty big space there, and that includes, like, the Surface Pro tablets and the soon released Surface 3. So even, you know, some of those types uh, of devices really are candidates here. And it's totally free. And there's a lot of recovery options um, that people can use. And it's really trying to capture the hearts and minds of IT pros. See to market. And, and like I said, we have, this is 1.0, but we have huge plans for what's coming. Well, this could be used inside of desktop as a service, inside of general in, generally inside of clouds for anything. If I have onesie, twosie, Windows VMs inside of any cloud, this would be a perfect candidate for that as well. Going far past what you guys plan for at this very moment, but there's a lot of use cases. Absolutely. In fact, during the beta, there have been a lot of people who have put it in the cloud to back up Azure VMs or Amazon VMs or the equivalent. In fact, I tweeted just earlier today, I had a dream about this last night, and that's kind of weird. But basically, I dreamed uh, or I dreamt that the uh, next product was called NCloud Backup. And that just it's not going to happen, but it was just a personal dream that I had. But you know, that's where I naturally kind of think of using it. Like, well, how can I use the cloud? And there's a lot of ways to use public cloud platforms, especially like Azure, vCloud Air, and Amazon, but they really don't provide you much outside of the run state. So having some additional protections and then the hooks that we're going to have into a Veeam backup repository really are some pretty cool options that, that people might want to start tinkering around with. You know, these are great um, times to play with and build a use case and, and find new ways to use them. The endpoint's an, a, an application, I'll call it an agent, which means that if I'm running in the corporate world instead of just individually, individually, if I'm going to a conference, this would be perfect. If I have a Windows laptop, especially if I'm going to a security conference, back it up, come back, completely wipe it out, restore, and that's an individual decision. But if I'm going to a corporate, if I'm part of the corporate world, there's a turf battle out there waiting to happen because they're probably already using a solution like NetBackup, Networker, any number of tools from Symantec and Quantum, HP, you name it. You know, this is going to be an interesting battle as you move forward because you have the virtual environment being backed up by being backed up and re replication and other tools of that nature which work under the covers. I have my desktop resources in the corporate world being backed up by other things because they're desktop agents and so forth. I can put those agents and applications also into the cloud, but they're very difficult to manage. So when you start thinking about that and Veeam's endpoint is at least visible with inside the backup and re replication manager, I can't do, I can't force a backup, but I can do restores and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But how do you see this turf battle running its course because it seems like one's happening well it's something will happen for one 
um, I'll be the first to admit, we're 20 years late to endpoint backup, but we want to really solve a lot of the problems that other tools have and then additionally come out with a free offering. Little things like um, creating bootable recovery media, really, really helpful. Uh, the cloud story, an option as well. Um, and, and scaling it to the cloud, right? What we're focusing on right now is getting the hearts and minds of IT pros using this product, very important also to listen to their feedback. In fact, we had some incredible suggestions out of our forums. That stuff all will form how this is developed today because we don't have any constraints of like a 20 year code base, you know, or something like that, that, um, not that that's bad, but just we don't have a, a huge footprint to deal with just yet. Uh, we have a lot of opportunity in cloud and service provider arrangements, as well as what could the business, you know, what could a corporate you a corporation do with this tool if they had this, if they had management, if they had all those different things. These are all things we're thinking about very carefully. Uh, I'm really excited, but for now, I'm playing with endpoints and I'm playing with clouds. That's where I'm going to play with it. And really what it is is a data mover. It absolutely is a data mover. It, I mean, uh, it's really not a huge amount of anything besides, okay, let's do VSS and let's move the data off the machine to somewhere else using deduplication and all the technologies you guys already have right. to save on bandwidth. Now, I'll tell you a little bit of insight. I mean, we kind of learned a little bit about this when we went down the path with Hyper-V support in 2011. So kind of, you know, writing stuff started seeding the thought then right and so now that was the right time to come out with with this and i think that you know when we look back so 2011 is when we added hyper v support that was a new platform for us this is a new platform it you know we're not exactly um popping out platforms every year but we kind of think the time is right to do things but this one again is different 20 years late to endpoint backup but i hope that uh, people will still like it better than than what they've seen. And the best indicator of that is that it's free. And so it's simple and free, and hopefully that'll help, uh, you know, seed its success. Well, one thing about it that I noticed, I mean, I've seen all, all versions of it, to be honest, and is that it is fairly easy to use. It does put the control back in the hands of the user, so you're not dependent on the right. big monolithic IT organization. But what I really like about it is that I can see everything in my backup replication and back, uh, being backup and replication console, and then I can restore it to a VM if I needed to, which means if I wanted to move someone's desktop, it's as easy as back it up, redeploy it, boom, I now give you an endpoint device, maybe a, a Surface when all locked down with just access to an RDP client or whatever it is. I now have a way to do desktop migrate desktop migrations that I've never had before. Indeed, in fact, I think that in the forums there was a uh, a person from a uh, a large space agency here in the United States who shared that type of experience because they had a problem with those types of uh, profile desktops. And you know, the person shared a lot of data in the forums, which personally I wouldn't have shared, but we took it. It was great, um, but that's absolutely a use case. Now, the only catch I'll mention is that we do not inject drivers, you know, so depending on the OS, the newer ones shouldn't have a problem mysteriously showing up inside of a VM. And then of course you can drop in uh, VMware tools and, or upgrade update integration services on Hyper-V, but newer OSs should mysteriously land on a VM just fine. But just to note, we don't inject uh, VMware tools or the uh, integration Not yet. services. And to be honest, you don't need VMware tools or the uh, integration services it, to run on modern exactly. operating systems. I, I mean, just the drivers hope, just work. I just hope, but I mean, that's not to say that people don't modify the installed drivers list or, you know, it, there, there could be some, there's always some exceptions to built-in support and we've seen oh, absolutely but if you're dealing with a standard system this should work but I, I mean I can also see it just if I'm in a V workspaces inside of Amazon or in, an, in any other DAS desktop as a service this is perfect for me to say hey I need to get that data backed up I don't trust Amazon or right. more to the point I need to actually move this data between 
my DAS platform and my Office desktop. I could use this to do that. Absolutely. I mean, this this notion of moving data and data management, when you understand the construct, you know, and it really for those watching this, you know, maybe give them a look. You know, you can get a free trial uh, or you can get the free edition of Endpoint. Uh, that's totally free. And then you can get an NFR for non resale or lab purposes. You can get an NFR license of Veeam Backup and Replication. And then you can play around with how this data moves around and you can really get a sense for, well, these are all the things I can do. Maybe that would be that, you know, maybe if I move this that way and that type of thing, then that might suit my needs. So I encourage people to play with it and, and also share the feedback of what you discovered because, you know, chances are we might build it in or um, help make it better for you. So it's www.veeam, no, go.veeam.com Slash, slash endpoint. endpoint. Go there to download the free version. If you want backup and replication, there is a free trial of that as well. Correct. The the trial I think is limited to 32 CPU sockets of VMware and Hyper-V. The NFR, the not for resale uh, license, is limited to two. And it lasts but fully longer. functional. But fully the functional. NFR also lasts a little bit longer. 180 days versus a trial of 32. Right. I mean, we're veeam.com, not veeam.org, but we still have a lot of good free and community stuff out there, we think. Absolutely. I mean, Veeam's always had a great community and some great products, including any number of fast FC, um, SCP and all those types of things. So yeah. You remember fast SCP? Used to use it all the time. Really? Interesting. Okay. Hey, I was doing backup and uh, using Veeam back at version one. But then wow. again, I date myself back to using ESX 152. Wow. Now, I wasn't using ESX 152. I uh, came around the 2.5 era myself. Yeah, two I, and I two used point ESX one. for a, a long time before, though. 2 and 2.1 were interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Back then, it was a totally different world. It really was. Things have yeah. really changed, and I think for the better. Things have gotten safer and easier to use. Mm-hmm. In the People product, are asking like, better questions today about how do I do this. I mean, absolutely, it's more about how do I solve this problem instead of how do I get it running. Right, that's true. But that was the big problem. How do you even create a host or how do you get a VM in there? Those were the problems we had then. Now it's like how do we, you know, ensure these ultimate levels of performance and availability and and protection. Right, those are the questions today. Yeah, and data protection is huge, and I think that. This adds nice. I mean, you recently added t you have, you um, let's see you Veeam backup and replication standard VMs. Then you added Hyper V. Yep. Then you added storage volumes specifically for HP Store virtuals, and you added one more this year. Three par was uh well, three par and HP left hand was V7. So that's Store v virtual and HP three three par. So what's the one you added? Was it NetApp? V8. NetApp, yes. NetApp, Just so you got screen. NetApp, so you can actually read off of their mirror volumes. Snap mirror, snap vault, snapshot copies. So yes. it's the mirror volumes, whatever they call them. Yep. Well, they can exist three different ways. Yeah, but it's still, to okay. me, it's all mirror. It's a snapshot. <laughs> it's a, snap, a storage <laughs> snapshot, not a Correct. virtualization snapshot. They and that's free, by the way. You can read that for free. So yep. you can extract the storage snapshots and do uh, five different recovery techniques for free. So you got that, and then you have, then you add it in. Um, tape support recently. V7, so August of 2013, we added tape support. Um, and Last... that was kind of a, that's a, that's improving. It was very much a checkbox feature then, and then a lot of feedback, and it got better. And we've got some stuff planned for later this year as so, well. So, I mean, the traditional way Veeam and a lot of backup things, and we've got a little bit of time left, was anybody doing virtualization backup back in the day, and even probably up until a couple of years, up to 2013, was you use Veeam or some other tool to back up the data center, the virtual data center, you drop it on a share somewhere, and then you had a, a device, another tool that took the share and dropped it to tape. Now you got rid of the need for that other tool. Well, yeah, a lot of times people grew up doing disk to disk to tape, and the moment they went to Veeam, they're like, how do I do that last move, right? Exactly. So, um, now we built that in. Um, but it's not just disk to disk to tape. It's disk to disk to anything that looks like a tape. Right, right. Or it could be a VTL, and now clouds are an option for that. Yeah. Um, and really that hits – that hits the, a really important thing that we've been talking about, the three, two, one rule, three different copies of your data, two different media, one of which is off-site. 
I like it. Doesn't lock you into any technology. It can address almost any failure scenario. Kind of a good way of thinking for data availability. Absolutely, and that's what data protection should always be about is available yep. data. And lastly, we've now added endpoints. You basically got from the user to wherever it's going to go. Yep. And would they can bring that data back to the data center? I like that because I can control that data a lot better. So it's good stuff. It's good stuff, and it's a good a good platform to start with. I mean, you guys have a lot of mo and data movement's a huge issue. It's just going to get more important more important as we we go more and more between clouds and hybrid yep. environments. Data motion and movement is the big issue. How I where I get the data from is not as big as the fact that I got to move terabytes or petabytes mm -hmm. between all these different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, like for example, there was one cloud that was a storage cloud that went out of business and gave everybody three days to download all their data. Oh, they, that one I remember. And it's yeah. a it's one of the companies had a petabyte storage. It's like not going to happen in three days. No, no way. So these guys should have been doing copies all along. True, and you know you want to avoid those types of problems. You want to avoid things that will um, prevent you from letting the users use their data or use their devices. I mean, I still believe I'd love to say that the device doesn't matter anymore. And if I can protect the endpoint a little bit better, then that really abstracts the device a little bit more for me every step of the way. So hopefully this can help with that. So just to remind everybody, it only works on Windows today. Yep. Go.veeam.com slash endpoint. Yep. It's good stuff. Everybody should give it a try. You can use it inside of works. You can use it inside of any, any modern win version of Windows. That's right. On That's right. any device, including virtual devices. That's right. Yep. In fact, I mean, I know people right away were using it for like fault tolerant VMs pre vSphere 6. So we could, because we couldn't back those up. They're in it for that, that type of stuff. A lot of good use cases. So great check it use out. cases. Check out the forums we are at uh, forums.veeam.com. Is there a special form under there? Uh, well, it's per product. So you'll see a separate one for backup and replication endpoint. Veeam One management pack uh, tape. There's a dedicated tape forum. You know, this, okay. it's segmented out pretty easily. So go to the endpoint forum, ask your questions, and or bring up your own ideas. There's a lot of use cases. Targeting the IT pro, as you said. Yep. The capturing and the hearts and minds. Very capture. <laughs> it's very emotional because as soon as you bring it into the corporate environment, you're going to have a turf battle. So just prepare Absolutely. yourself. Indeed. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being on the virtual thoughts episode number two. Everybody check out Veeam. Thanks for having me on, Edward.